What's up, everybody? Welcome to Bowers 3 Raw TV. Well, first of all, happy 4th of July, guys. I hope you guys had a great, safe holiday. Erin and I got to spend time with uh, her family. We went out to see her family. And uh, this morning, I actually get to march in a parade for the second year in our local um, in our local community for my, my lodge, which was um, pretty cool. It's cool to see the whole community come together and um, just be together on one spot and just in celebrate our nation. I mean, celebrate America. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, right? So, like, when I'm out there, it's like 100 degrees here in Fairfax with, like, 85% humidity. And people literally run the parade route fucking passing out and shit, going into heat stroke. It makes it worth it because you're you're with your community. And I actually feel like the older I get, the more I understand that that's important. Like, your neighbors, people live a couple streets over, stuff like that. Like, we have elderly neighbors. It's important that we're there for them. You know, we have neighbors next to us that have, um, you know, a little tiny baby. It's important that we're there for them if they need us for something that, you know... Having a, a tight-knit community, I feel like that you live around your specific area, I think is important. But, um, you know, some people would disagree. But, anyways, that's all we're here to talk about tonight. So, we're here tonight to talk about GMOs. Now, Jerry, we beat the GMO shit to death. And I'm not here to dissuade anybody from eating GMOs, using GMOs, etc., whatever. I want information out there. And I've kind of stumbled upon some information that um, is kind of concerning. And... Um, you know, if you look this up, you're going to find a lot of people saying GMOs are fine. It's the best thing that ever happened to fucking the entire world. Like, you know, they they go way out of their way to say how great it is. And um, they don't really look at what could be the downside. Because every good side has a downside. Every drug has a side effect. Every, uh, every action has a reaction, equal and opposite reaction. Like, to say something like, you could just take this, you know, this food and be totally fine for the rest of your life. You can't even do that with regular foods. Regular foods that are in the natural form, even if you overdo them or some people have a pre genetic predisposition for it, can actually cause health complications. So to say that natural foods could fuck you up if you didn't know anything about you know, your predisposition, to say that GMO foods couldn't would be a fucking lie. They don't really even understand everything that these things do. They just try to go, oh, well, we tested this, this, and this. What about all the, all the other things? Now, bear with me. So there's certain, uh, the approved commercial products that they're talking about for genetically modified or organisms, GMO, what they're trying to do for soybeans, they use herbicide, uh, an herbicide for herbicide tolerance. That's what they, they make the GMO for and that one for. They genetically modify the soybean so the herbicide tolerance goes up so they can tolerate more pesticide on it, right? So glyphosate herbicide Roundup, um, conferred by expression of glyphosate tolerant from the plant enzyme 5, 3 phosphate, yada, blah, 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 isolated from the soya, whatever. It tells you how it kind of works with the thing. Well, here's the thing. If you are genetically modifying a food that we ingest to have a higher tolerance for that the food then contains that thing that you're trying to get the food to tolerate well guess what our bodies don't tolerate it so now you're putting a food in your body that has been created to tolerate something that our bodies actually can't tolerate so here lies another problem so let's say there was no problem with the GMOs as far as gene expression now I do want to put out there and a lot of people don't understand this that food contains information food tells your body what to do, then your body does it. And what it does is it has a, uh, multiple hormonal reactions that cause your body to utilize that food in a certain way. So for instance, you know, uh, one aspect or a way of explaining this would be if you had a carbohydrate, your body would then secrete insulin. Well, how do you know, well, how does your body know to secrete insulin? The food actually tells it. As you eat the food, it sends a signal to your brain letting you know that it was a carbohydrate. If you ate a piece of fat, it doesn't have the same response from insulin. It's still both food, However, each, both fat and carbohydrates each have their own information that tells your body what to do. So like, just like if you took a complex carbohydrate, you're not gonna get the same type of stomach acid secretion as if you ate a piece of meat. It, it, it tells your body to do different things. Now, the problem that we have here is the GMO is genetically modified so that we can have these certain things that won't affect the foods while they're, they're growing or being made or whatever the case may be. But the problem is, they don't really know exactly what they do in your body information wise. These are not the same foods that we have naturally. It has a different effect. They have been created to be different. So therefore it's not the same thing. So the GMOs have different effects or contain different information that goes to your body. So it tells it to do different things. Now, what does it tell it to do? I don't know and neither do they. That's the big problem. They don't understand these odds oh, totally safe because we looked at it for over a 10 year period and people didn't get cancer from it, right? But what other ailments happen from it? What other things out there are being chalked up to genetic predispositions, to other things that are, you know, environmental, or who the fuck knows what they're adding, what they're trying to piece together. 
but we don't exactly know what information that GMO contains because that's not how it was created. It was created just to be tolerant towards like herbicides and shit. So now you look at it and say, okay, this information that this contains is different. Well, is that good for my body or is it not? We just don't know. And the problem that we have is some of these things that are created have been under the guise to help out humanity to the point where they're like, oh, we can feed starving people if we create these genetically modified organisms. We can grow food. I'm like, yeah, but you can grow organic food at the same fucking time. Like growing a GMO and growing organic food, you could do both. But they're looking for a shortcut to try to feed as many people as the whole as they can at the whole time. But the problem is people that are starving, and this is going to sound so awful, people that are starving, they're more worried about getting the calories in them and keeping them from starving, having the wasting happening than they are about long-term side effects from these GMOs and what could possibly happen. Because they think, well, if we don't feed them these GMOs and this is how we're going to solve hunger, they're going to fucking die anyways. So we might as well give them the GMOs and some of them will fucking survive, some of them won't. We don't know what the fuck's going on, but at least they'll have food. And that's like the foundation. That's the basis. So they're worried about the foundation. But they're not even thinking about the other layers or the levels of the house that are being built later on as they're consuming this food long term. Now, this is not a fact yet. They haven't gone and just taken all GMOs and spread it all over the world where there's famine to try to stop famine. But that's an idea. That's one idea that they're saying, well, we can make these genetically modified organisms. We can make tons of them and they would be cheap as shit. Remember, you always get what you pay for. If you have something that's cheap as shit, the quality is cheap as shit, which means it does not have the same sustenance as a fucking real food. It's just that it is. And now you're going to get people to argue up and down. I like to point to other countries. And when other countries besides America, because America is very industrial, very capitalism, they want to make money. They don't really care about health. They could give a fuck less. Most of these people, CEOs that are sitting in these fucking offices that are proving all this shit, don't give a fuck about you and me. They don't give a shit about the Roundup. They could give a fuck less. Aaron and I actually saw a fucking advertisement for Roundup on TV. 20 minutes later, we saw the um, lawsuit that's going on right now. It was like, if you have been fucked up by a Roundup, you may have a case. Call us at blah, blah, blah. It was like, you have one advertisement advertising it about how great it is and shows them fucking eating the fucking spraying the shit on the lawn I'm like what the fuck and then the next one says that shit that we just told you to buy yeah that fucking caused cancer and that dude got 280 million dollars it was 240 his name was Dwayne Johnson like the rock but it's not the rock he was awarded 240 million dollars because there was internal documents that were leaked that showed that roundup causes cancer and he got fucked up from it so now there's actual lawsuits I think it's 200 lawsuits that are going against Monsanto who makes roundup specifically because they said it's safe and they found, you know, we're finding otherwise. So my question for you guys, I guess, is you listen to the same people that tell you Roundup is safe. And it's been proven, but because no, no scientist has come up and put a stamp on it. But scientists have, but it's just not the ones that are promoted. If these people are telling you it's safe and they're the same people, well, the same people that are telling you Roundup is safe are telling you the GMO is safe. Why would you believe them? I'm just curious as to why people believe just random shit. Oh, I saw it on the news. I read it online. Yeah, because online is real. What the fuck? Why do you guys believe that it's safe when if you look at all the data, you have some things say it's safe, some say it's not. Okay, well, why is it safe and why is it not? And you really start delving into that and you're like, wait a minute. It says it's safe because it was tracked over 15 years. This one says not safe because when they tracked it over 35 years, it was the end of that fucking 35 years that all this shit started showing up. This one says it's safe because there's never been anything reported that has been bad as far as health. This one says all these ailments started popping up when this fucking was done. So you have these two different things. Now, my thing is always the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? But if it was 100% safe, there would be no other data, right? We don't need to know that a car goes down the road. We don't need a study to do that, right? There's no fucking, you know, as long as the car's got gas in it, you step on the gas, you step on the brake, it goes and stops, right? We don't need a study to tell us that because that is fact and we know it. Well, if it was fact that this stuff was okay for you and it didn't need to be checked into, that it may not be bad for you, this data wouldn't exist. There would be no studies looking at it and they would find no information, which means something is going on. So I kind of stepped back and I looked at this stuff and they have like, you know, insect resistance for corn, um, altered fatty acid composition for canola oil. These are like the, um, the genetically conferred, all right, which is the what it does. So it says like insulin, insect uh, resistant in the organism is corn, okay, and it's telling you the genetic change. So what they did for an insect, insect resistance corn, the resistance to insects passed specifically the European corn borer through expression of the incestial protein, and it tells you CRY1AB from Bactilius thera, and I believe it's a bacteria. Now, here's the thing. Food changes gene expression, right? 
And anytime you take a natural food and you modify that, it changes what it does to the gene expression. Now, everything that I looked at, every piece of evidence I looked at, looked at basic stats. It didn't look at gene expression. It didn't say that, look, we know if you eat the corn that was created GMO, it causes this type of gene expression. It also doesn't say corn that's genetic GMO doesn't cause any issues beside, like, like other than regular corn would. It's exactly the same. It's totally safe. It doesn't say that either. So if you look at the wording and understand that the wording has to be very specific when they put the shit out there. If they said it is 100% safe just like regular corn, it is no different than regular corn, the way that it works in your body and the gene expression that happens, that would be boom. That would be evidence right in your face and nobody would be able to refute it. They would have to do studies and it's okay, this is what it says. But however, they didn't do that. What they did was they put something up there that was very vague saying, you know, um, the corn that's genetically modified has been deemed safe. That is a big fucking area. That's a big gray area to fuck around in rather than saying, we know it doesn't affect your pancreas. We know it doesn't affect this. We know it doesn't affect that. It doesn't change gene expression. And I think that's the big thing. I think people are so dumbed down to believe that, well, food is just to make me happy. That's what it is. Like, I can't tell you how many people like, look to food for happiness, look to food to feel better. So they say, well, this food will still make you happy. It's just the same way. But you're not thinking about what it does to your actual body, what it does on a gene level. If you actually look up gene expression in food, I think you'd be shocked as to what food actually does to your body. Now, another thing is when you start having these chemicals or these genetically modified organisms in your body, our bodies are multicellular organisms. They're constantly replicating cells. And one of those cells that replicates that screws up sometimes is a cancer cell. That's how we get cancer. We're not born with these technical cancer cells in our body. Everybody says that. What happens is your body's replicating cells all the time and it'll replicate a cell and it'll screw up and it'll be a cancerous cell. Your body recognizes it, it fights it off and destroys it and that's it. Now, when you get cancer that grows and you actually get cancer, that's when your body can't fight it off. But we've seen a lot more cancer. And I'm telling you, if you guys look, I've put up the graphs, I've talked about it. People just don't want to do the work. They just don't want to believe me. If you did the work yourself and looked at the shit, you would see the rise in cancer, a huge rise in every type of cancer in the last 15 years once these GMOs started being added into the foods. So now we have not a distinct link because they could never tie it together. Bullshit, because we tied the Roundup with cancer. It's already been in a court of law. There was more than enough proof and internal documents leaked saying that it does cause cancer, but it's being hidden from the public. So we already have one thing that everybody said was safe and doesn't cause cancer that actually does. Now you're gonna sit there and tell me just, just by chance that cancer has gone through the fucking roof, okay? And it has nothing to do with the food. I'd say almost everything has to do with the food. Our food that we put in our body is to heal our body, to, to repair our body. It's literally to be healthy. It's literally for everything. That's why we eat. We don't eat for pleasure. That's not what it's here for. As advanced humans, as technology advanced as we are, we have begun to take pleasure in everything in the fucking world, including food. If you really break it down to brass tacks and go back to like fucking cavemen, you think they give a fuck if there's A1 steak sauce on that deer they just fucking chased down a bit? No, those motherfuckers eat the thing whole. They even eat the fucking fur. They don't give a shit. So you have to look at what food is. When you start genetically modifying that and fucking with it, it is going to do something somewhere. The problem is we're not going to read about it until it really hits hard. It's just like if you had a disease, you could have cancer and not even know what the fuck is going on until cancer has gotten to the point where you're starting to have organ failure or some kind of problems that show up as side effects to where all the, if you didn't catch it on the scan. If you didn't catch it on the skin, you could be fine. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't feel well. Like my grandmother actually was diagnosed with cancer about three or four days after Christmas, about 20 years ago. She was fine. All of a sudden just didn't feel good before Christmas. Went to the doctor a couple days after Christmas, was diagnosed with cancer. It was spread all over the place. She was dead within 30 days. My father was feeling really like he had cancer, went through chemotherapy, and had been completely in remission for a couple of years. Started feeling a little weird. Went to the doctor, got a scan. They told me he had two weeks to live. He died within 24 hours. Like you don't even feel that disease till it happens and it hits you hard. So there's a lot of shit going on in people's bodies right now. And all of a sudden, finally, they get some kind of effects or side effects from what the fuck is going on. And then they go, oh, well, just, you know, it's this, it's that. It's all this person smoked. Like there's so many other things they can blame it on. Not even looking at the food, but we also know those people that smoke three packs a day that never get lung cancer, right? So, okay, maybe it's not the smoking. Maybe it is the food. Like, they just don't look into it because they're like, ah, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. But then you go down to the information that's really out there that is the not so fun information, the not so promoted information, the shit that gets buried. And you start to see, like, well, they don't know what it does to gene expression. 
You don't, but you know what food does, right? You know what different foods do. Yeah, well, we've studied that. But you don't know what the GMOs do. No. But what the fuck? How could you, how could you substitute something for another thing when you don't even know if it actually acts the same way on all levels? But they do it because we can do it in America. So my whole goal, guys, is not to scare anybody and say, oh, you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't eat that. Look, do whatever the fuck you want to do. I can give a shit less. Like, it's all, it's all you. Whatever the fuck you do is on your deal. And if you fuck up, you know, if you fuck up and eat some weird shit and get sick, it's not on me. I don't give a fuck. But at least I put out the information of the shit I saw. And some people are going to look at it. And those people are actually going to go look up shit themselves and do research because they care. They care about themselves, their kids, their family. They don't want to be fucked up. They don't want them to be fucked up. They want to be as healthy and live the best life they can for as long as they can. Right? And I think that the more people realize that the ailments that they're having is not just genetic. They chalk a lot of shit up to genetics. Environmental, food-wise, and genetics too. It's all of those things. But that food thing, I'll tell you what, that's the one that's buried the most in, in the general population because the food, if you really start looking and you're finding all these chemicals, you start doing research on these chemicals, you're like, all these say, say right now not to ingest it. These chemicals that are actually in Chick-fil-A's fucking food. I thought Chick-fil-A was one of the cleanest things out there. I was eating it all the time. Couldn't figure out why I was feeling weird. When I looked up that shit, I did the video a couple years ago. I couldn't believe the amount of chemicals that were actually in this clean food that I thought I was eating. I was fucking horrified. I found out that schools will not even let Chick-fil-A be sold in the schools. Like Chick-fil-A wanted to go in schools. They wanted to go in, you know, for like hot lunch. They'd be the ones in the schools. All the schools told them no. They can't feed what's in that food to the kids because they're still growing. That's something that makes you think. They won't feed it to kids. What the fuck? I'm an adult, but I'm still a fucking person. Can it still fuck me up? They don't know. So it's like, I'm not going to take a chance of eating these fucking weird, these weird chemicals in this food just because I like the taste. Taste is not that important to me. Some people, that's all they can fucking deal with is taste. So hopefully you guys understand that these videos are not to demonize certain things. They're not to make people boycott shit. They literally are to get you guys to think. Think for yourself and go out there and look. You know, go out there and really look, really dig. You don't give me this shit like, I don't have time. Look, I don't got fucking time either. None of us have time. But, the, you know, your health, your body, your well-being, your future, that's your fucking responsibility. Which means that you better take your ass out of your fucking pocket and start getting down there and looking at some of this shit, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Before you're sitting at the doctor and you get that fucking, that doctor visit that nobody wants, where they tell you you have to lose 50 pounds or you die because your heart's fucked up. And you're like, I didn't, what, what are you talking about? I have no heart. Or you have cancer. Or you have this, you have that. And all of a sudden you're fucking hit with the truth that you have fucking... 30 days left to live, right? I mean, I can't explain to you guys how many times with different people I have been through things and watched them die fast. And every single one of them, all they ever say is they don't want to go. They want to have more time. They want more time. Well, I got news for you guys. Eating the right way, exercising, taking care of yourself, that buys you more time. Whether you believe it or not, I don't give a fuck. That's the truth. People won't tell you that because they just want to sell you the next program. They want to sell you that. I don't give a fuck. Don't buy anything from me. I give a shit less. But the truth is the truth. And at least I know I'm putting it out there even if nobody else will. BowsterTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. BowsterTraining.com is a blog. It's the truth is out there. Here we go with the X-Files shit again. And we are out.